Okay, so starting to get the ground prepped. Our ground is pretty flat here, so I don't think I'm gonna have to do a whole lot of grading. But what I'm doing now is I'm using this hand cultivator here to loosen up the soil. So if there's any weeds or anything in the area, I can um, take care of that. And then it's also loosening the soil up. So if there's little imperfections in the height of the soil, we can take care of it from there. I got, I have a hundred foot tape measure and I use that as my string line. I also have a 300 foot tape measure I do the same thing for, but uh, I use tape measures instead of actual string for string lines because the tape measures have numbers on them. So like for instance, when we ran the fence here, the back part of this fence was I think 230, 240 feet, something like that. So I just took that 300 foot tape, put it on that corner post over there, and then just ran it straight across. And that's how we were able to get all of the T posts and all the wood posts lined up. So I'm using the same premise here. That's where I want to have the run stop. And so I'm having a straight line. And so it's just sitting over here right now until I get done with the cultivating, then I'm gonna put it back. And then that'll be approximate where the board's gonna be. And then I'm gonna take, I took an angle measurement uh, when I was on the computer. So it's either 10 foot six and a half or 11 foot six and a half, one of the two. But if I go from the outside corner over there to where this one's supposed to go, then it should line up and be 90 degrees then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side over here depending on how long this takes I might do the rest of them or I might not I want to get this coop started and this coop area itself is going to be utilizing just three of these four by fours and then the rest of it's going to be all run space so uh, we're deciding on what we're going to do. We're also going to interlock this with a 2x4 to create a plate. And so we might, I might go ahead and just put that 2x4 down so then we just lock the entire run in place. But we'll just have to see how long it takes. I don't want to have to do this for two or three days because I want to get the framing of the coop started at least this weekend. As you can see, the guys are out here helping me. Uh, lady's over there doing her business. And so they're gonna be out here. I got water for them. It's on the back of the tent where, the, where there's shade. So when Sherlock gets too hot, he'll gravitate towards over there anyway. So let me continue and we'll see how long it takes to get this actual level. Oh, uh, I got that. Probably is about as level as I'm going to get it. It's within the lines of the level, so I'm going to call that good enough. And then we will go from there. Okay, I got all three sides leveled and perpendicular to each other. The side closest, I'm just using that as a um, identifier because... That's basically one board on the back. And then this one is not going to be there. I'm going to take it out. But here they are. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get our ground mesh. And I'm going to cut the ground mesh. And then put the ground mesh on the ground here. And... Our mesh is about three feet long, so that's an eight foot section right there. So I'm gonna need 14 feet of that on this side, 14 on the other side, and then these sides are gonna be 30. So 30 plus three feet on each side is 36. 
So hopefully that's actually 100 feet. Because um, it said it was 100 feet. So we'll go from there. So what I'm going to do is the mesh is going to go underneath the boards. And then it's going to go out away from the coop in the run area. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use what they call lawn staples and pound them into the ground. So let me go get the mesh and let me start cutting and then we'll come back. Okay, here's our mesh roll. We got this yesterday. This is half inch by one inch mesh as you can hopefully see there and the minimum they want is i think one by three uh, but this was like five dollars more for a roll so andre just got the smaller openings um, like i said earlier this is primary reason for this is to keep uh, animals from digging underneath to get to the chickens that way and so the sizes are in metric it's a 0.9 meter width which if you convert it out is a little less than three feet it's like two feet 11 and a half and then the length is 30 meters which if you convert that out it is uh, about 98 and a half feet plus or minus so what I'm going to do is I'm going to untangle this and then I'm going to cut out uh, 14 feet and then we will go from there. Okay, fabric mesh for the ground is cut. As you can see, it blends into the ground very well. What I'm going to do is it's flipping up right now. Before I actually place it, I'm going to flip it over so it's bending down not up um, in architecture with drawings and in construction you typically do that with drawing sets so when you lay them out they fold down instead of fold up they're just a lot easier so i'm going to do that with the mesh so i'm going to place it and then we'll be back okay andrea came out and was inspecting and she thought there were too many weeds underneath the mat. So the cultivator that I had showed earlier really was struggling to try to get the weeds up. But Andrea's mother has something called a hula hoe, which is what this is here. And this hula hoe works like a champ. Let me see if I can use it real quick. That... What it does, it comes in and it scalps the ground. So it does this. So you're able, I'm doing this with one hand with virtually no force right now because I'm holding the phone. And it's able to scalp the ground and remove the weeds very quickly. And then all we did was take the garden rake and put it back under. And so now it's all sitting on the perimeter. So what I'm gonna do right now is, here's my yard staples here. And got my trusty mallet. So I'm gonna put staples in. As you can see here, the mesh is going underneath that four by four. So the weight of the entire structure is going to help hold it down. And then we're going Andrea wants to put staples about every eight inches on the perimeter and then we'll go from there. The, uh, we were going to overlap when we go down and do the sides. And so by overlapping, we'll be able to, uh, you know, protect the corners properly. So, you know, we're not stopping it right there. It's going to overlap and go to there and so the corners will be protected and so let me get these staples in then i'll be back okay here's the staples like i said i just put a couple here just to hold them down so they don't 
uh, curl up on me for some reason. So I have them eight, every eight inches on the perimeter and then staggered every 16 inches in between. And then the same thing over here. Now I'm gonna come back and uh, take the garden rake and come in and put this back, except for the ends. I'm not gonna do that because we still have to put mesh on that when we go the other direction, but I am gonna put it here because I just wanna see what it looks like. All right, I think this is one of the things that sounds better in your head than it is in actual practice. So I just put the weeds and dirt on top of this, and I don't know if I really like it, but I'm not moving it now. So main thing I wanted to do is I wanted to protect the mesh because as we walk over it, I'm concerned it's either going to get warped or damaged. But if it has a little bit of something on top of it, then hopefully it'll protect it a little bit. I'll smooth it out a little bit, but this is the end of day one of the coop build. And I'm gonna come back tomorrow. Hopefully, haha, -ha, I can get all of this done in one day. Uh, today is Tuesday. Uh, Thursday, Andre and I are gonna be out uh, working all day. We're going to be in Litchfield Beach, which is about an hour and 15 minutes south of here. And uh, we got to measure some houses for our work. And that's going to be an all day affair. And then by the time we get back, it's going to be late afternoon. We're going to be exhausted. So Thursday is out for chicken cooping. But tomorrow, which is Wednesday, I should be back at it again. So, well, my goal is, is either Friday or Saturday at the latest, I want to start framing so we can start framing the coop. Uh, this is going to be the low side over here, so that's the side I'm going to start with. And obviously this is the high side. So I want to make sure to be able to cut so I can uh, get those walls framed up and then get them up to where they're at least pseudo stable so I can start framing the rest of it. Because if I can get these two sides up here, then I can infill with these two sides. And then as soon as some of it starts getting attached, then it should be able to sustain itself. But I might or might not have to have bracing until I get to that point. I don't know yet. That'll be a uh, judgment call when I get to it. But that's the end of today. I'm rambling. So come back tomorrow and hopefully the rest of this will get done. Okay, remember when I said I was done for the day? I kind of lied. It got to be about 5 o'clock. And I'm like, it's not that hot out there. The sun's not out. Let's go out for a little bit. So what we did is Andrea hula -hoed all of this so here's the hula ho in action right now that it just takes these clumps and just takes them right up and what she's doing is she's preparing the ground for the mesh and it's getting too late to put the mesh on tonight because it's going to start getting dark at some point but we at least got this ready. So what we did, here's the entire 30 foot of the run here on this side. And then here's the end piece. Then that's the final piece that goes on this side. And then there's two more pieces, which I'll grab tomorrow out of the master pile over there but now since it's getting dark and it's getting dinner time now i can say we are about done for today uh sherlock of course has been helping he likes to eat all the weeds he can i have no idea why sherlock hey why do you like eating weeds so much huh no don't wag your tail at me 
Lady, of course, is over there. Eating weeds. Eating weeds, having some good lady time. And so, yeah, now this is the official end of the first day. Welcome to day two of the build. So today I want to finish up this foundation and I want to get the base plate on top of these four by fours so this can be locked together so once it gets into place it's not going to move. What we've done so far is I moved the boards a board length back so three and a half inches from where they were and then I cut and placed the mesh down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the boards, put them back where they were, so then they can be uh, lined up again, and then I'll staple it down like I did over there yesterday. And then once I do that, then I got to prep the other two sides and do the same thing. So it's pretty much a rinse and repeat until I get this done. Okay, the mesh around the perimeter is done on all four sides. As per usual, it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to because I wanted to have the next step done by now, but it is what it is. So, as you can see, all four sides are level, or at least as level as I can get it. And the mesh is all the way around the perimeter. And it actually was these two sides when they came out were less than a half inch off when I put the back piece on. So this side here is the one I did last. And so I just straightened it up a little bit. And actually it looks like it got cockeyed over there. So I have to change that. And um, I could have been done sooner, but Sherlock kept getting in my way. For some reason, when I was putting the staples down, he had to be on the mat in the area where the staples were not located yet and right in front of me. He couldn't be where the staples were. They had to be where the staples were not. So, but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go over to the master pile over there, grab a bunch of two by fours and I'm going to screw them down on top of this. So, so when I get the first couple of them down, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, what I'm doing here is, you can see where the four x four in the bottom is butted up on the end with the four x four going perpendicular. Then what I'm gonna do is with these two bys, I'm gonna go on top put a couple screws on both sides and have it offset it and then put screws all the way down to lock the base in place. Then what will happen is every single one there will be an overlap like right here, well, like right there. So then when I put the next one down it'll overlap and lock those two into place and go all the way down. And while I'm over here doing this, I got a little friend right here who was obviously not phased by my impact driver. You know the impact driver is really loud, so I don't know what type of bug it is, but I typically have a live and let live philosophy with the bugs, except for ants because ants suck but other than that if they don't bother me I will leave them alone so I don't think it's a carpenter bee because those look a little different so I don't know what it is it's just chilling out there so I'll just leave them be okay the 2x4s are on and the foundation is complete except for the intermediate screws I'm going to put screws every 8 inches staggered on these 2x4s. But I have screws 
at all the connections and all of the ends of the 2x4s. So now it's not going to move. I'm sure if we slam something down on it hard enough or bang into it hard enough, it might move a little bit. But other than that, the sucker is not going to move. I'll come back and do that probably tomorrow. It's getting late and my batteries are dying. So the guys went in, I don't know, about 30 or 40 minutes ago. But yeah, so this is the official foundation for the chicken coop and the run area which is 8 by 30 now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting the frames so I'm the low sides over there high side is over here and I'm going to start cutting frames and start putting them together uh, the majority of the frame is going to be used with a Craig jig uh, which is a pocket hole situation and uh, most chicken coops that I saw use that and so because the studs are going to be 90 degrees the way they should be if you were framing a house so but we'll get into all that next video uh, on how the Craig jig is going to work the cutting and putting everything together.